Hey guys, Stormy here. I am at the spider farm as you can see and probably cl pretty clearly here. I've just been grinding away some levels. And as you can see, my diamond sword is getting pretty low. I actually made a bunch of iron swords for this but forgot to bring them. But anyways, I've been needing a new diamond sword anyways. This is a level 1 enchant, just sharpness 1. and. I was over here to grind out levels anyways, I was watching some YouTube just just to waste the time, because it, it goes a little faster when you have something else to do. But I'm here primarily to enchant picks, because this is my best pick right now, Efficiency 5 on Breaking 3 Fortune 3. I don't want to use this pick for digging if I can help it, because it's my only Fortune 3 pick. I have my Silk Touch pick over here, but I have another Silk Touch pick in storage, so I'm not all too worried about this one breaking. And the other one I have in storage has Unbreaking 3 anyways. So I was just getting some levels together to enchant a couple picks, and I figured while I was at it, I might as well get the levels to fully enchant a Diamond Sword as well. So that's where I am right now. After I get it, just one more level, I think 39 should be good. I'll go, I'll get some stuff together, and I'll enchant up some tools and a new sword. Man, that spider farm really bogs down as time goes on. I think spiders are getting stuck in those water chambers that I have running along the spider farm to move them. Now, some things have changed around here since the last episode, as you can probably see right here. I have actually started working on some other stuff around here. I can show that right here. This right here is the uh, beginnings of the first level pathway that I have planned. Beyond this one, I'm going to go another three rows down, I think. So one, two, three right there. That'll be the second floor. And then there will be the bottom floor down there, so I'm just going to have three levels when this thing's said and done. I'm going to have these pathways go all the way along the back wall, that's where we are now. And then I'm going to have them go all the way along the sides. I'm not quite sure how far out this way that's going to be, or how far out this way that's going to be. Though I'm going to know this way sooner, because the spider farm is back there, and I don't want to encroach on the spider farm. I want that to be separate, so we're probably going to try to push farther that way. Although, going this way, I have the problem of water up here. There's an ocean just not all that far out this way, so this might not be as wide as I'd like it to be, but as far as I know, straight back that way, I should just have as much room as I want for the most part. And it, there shouldn't be any issue just continuing going out that way for quite some time. So, what's probably going to end up happening is, once I've built out these pathways, I'm going to eventually detail them and stuff, I'm going to have bridges that connect from here and the lower level that will be right on that level. They'll connect up to these columns, they'll go around the columns, and then continue straight in the other direction, and that will be how I get from one end to the other. I'm not sure about side to side yet. I think I might just use these paths for side to side, but to get from one end to the other, I think it would be a, a lot easier. Well, it won't... Oop. Haha, <laughs> water. Not gonna die on this thing yet. Although I did notice after last episode, I do have Feather Falling 3 on my boots, so I probably wouldn't have died. But, you know. But yeah, I'm pretty sure just uh, a pathway straight across around these columns and keeping going will be faster to get from one side to the other than if I have to run all the way however far out it goes this way, then across the sides, then up to wherever. And I've also started playing with the idea of these doors. You can't really see this one. I had to leave this path here because I have to get from here to here. I guess I can take out this one because I got a stairway over there. It's not that big a deal. Yeah, I'll just take out a little bit. Um, I've been playing with the idea of doors for some side rooms. And of course it lands right there. I'm not going to worry about that. It's just, co uh, just cobblestone. 
but you can see here the shape I'm going to inset the doors by one we're gonna have a five block tall section then two blocks then another block you can't actually see the top there because it's a uh, that's right where my enchanting room is and I was about to use that but here's the basic shape of the door I am gonna add some details to it like I did to the the pillars the details are probably going to be pretty similar along this whole thing it's a lot of stone brick a lot of uh, polished andesite that sort of stuff and as you get higher up it'll uh, it'll be more natural looking although I think up here I'm not entirely sure where I might wind up making the main entrance be this door eventually but right now I have made it an automatic sugarcane farm this thing is not quite as efficient as I was hoping it would be. Last time I checked it, there wasn't very much. Hopefully there's more now. Yeah, that's pr it's pretty slow. I'm hoping that as I'm digging this out, though, this thing's going to be running constantly, and that's going to be getting me sugarcane. And it is working. You could see in the chest there was sugarcane, so this is going to help with my sugarcane. But I had a feeling this one was going to be pretty slow, so I did also just... Uh, plant a big patch of sugarcane just uh, all around that uh, ocean out front. I got so much cobblestone. I keep taking this stuff out and putting it in these furnaces. Checking these real quick to see if any of them... No, I can do a full load. Good. I keep taking more and more of this stuff out and smelting it, but I just get more of this stuff than I can deal with. I'm trying to turn it into stone and then into stone brick. And I do have a lot of stone at this point. I mean, you can see that barrel's full, that barrel's starting to fill up. I got some stone brick stuff in here. So I've got a good bit of stuff, but nothing near what I'm going to need for this thing. And <laughs> my chest up top, they're also just loaded with cobblestone like I got one in the corner here that's nothing but cobblestone this one's got a ton of cobblestone in it this one's got cobblestone in it I need more block chests for cobblestone but something else that's changed since last episode right out here I've started work on a pumpkin farm uh, again not super not super efficient. I didn't want this to be efficient. I wanted this to look nice. And I think I've got that with this. I really do like the way this has uh, come together. I have these like cobblestone walls that go around the whole thing and these these uh, lamps all throughout. So I think that's looking pretty nice actually. It looks pretty good from up here. I just really like the color and I really like the way it just rolls up into the mountain. I had to do a good bit of terraforming for that. Other big change. I had a saddle and I had some horse armor and I decided I need to go find a horse. And I found one. Oop. Oh, wrong button. Uh, this horse is actually it's pretty fast. I'll show you real quick. Pop that off. There you go. Get on the horse and it is not bad for speed i'm actually pretty happy with this it's not a it's not a crazy good jumper there was a full jump i think can it clear three blocks yeah it can clear three i think that's its upper limit though and i don't know how often i'm going to use the horse because we've got that nether hub Actually, fun little thing here. I learned that if you've just got a one block space here, the horse doesn't think it can get through it and it won't leave on its own. I put that there just in case, though, because I don't want to risk it. Because I had this horse untethered for just a couple minutes. It was over there, it was over there, it was all over the place. I finally got this built up for it, got the lead, put it in here, put the lead on. But yeah, this pumpkin farm... You can see I've got some stuff going. I've got some seeds there, some carved pumpkins here. And this is the starts of that uh, shop that I was talking about. 
I'm planning on getting that shop up and running as soon as possible, but this is pretty slow. And I didn't want to make an automatic pumpkin farm. I'm not entirely sure how to make one, actually. I'll have to play around with that in a creative world. But today, the big plans are get these tools enchanted and work on uh, collecting up some more pumpkins and some more sugar cane. Well, I'm not quite sure where I just left off. I had to jump off in a hurry real quick. Uh, nothing to worry about, but I had to jump off for a second. So I'm back now. The plan for today is mostly just to uh, get these tools built up and enchanted. And then after that, I'm going to do some mining in there, just get the place cleared out a little bit more so that I can hopefully give that sugarcane farm some time to build up a stockpile and then we'll go and we'll build that shop over at spawn and we'll see where we go from there. So I'll get started on enchanting stuff and then we'll get to work on that shop. Alright, give me something good. Knockback 2. I will be enchanting a pick. Give me something good. Efficiency 4. I will take efficiency 4 and breaking 3. That's really good. Okay, now sword. Sharpness 4. I'll take that. It's a lot better than sharpness 1. Fortune 3. Another fortune pick. That'll be good. That means I can use this one for digging and I won't feel bad. And then last one. Silk Touch Efficiency 4 on Breaking 3. Perfect. Alright, I'll get to digging out some space in here, and then we'll check on the sugar cane and see where we go from there. Alright guys, so a lot of stuff has changed since the last time you saw me just in there enchanting stuff. First of all, I finished digging out the middle section, so this is much, much bigger in here. Big area cleared out. Took a lot of uh, a lot of durability for my picks. I still got my good one. I really got to get mending though. That's uh, that's a big thing right now. I got to get mending. That's probably going to happen soon. I don't think I mentioned, but I did change the design of the pillar again. You can see I kind of tightened things up a bit more, so it's a little more more stout than it was before. I put stairs on the edges just for a smoother transition, and I don't know if this uh, this little slot carried through all the way before. I don't think it did, but it does now, and I just I prefer this a lot more. I think it looks better from a distance than the other one did. I wasn't really a fan of how the other one looked from a distance, especially from below. I didn't like how it looked from down here. Oh, another small ad, not much, but that trap door right there is just letting sunlight through. So that is going to be most of how I light in here in these big open areas. It's going to be sunlight like that. I also did the math. I counted some stuff out so that I know exactly how far I can dig from each side. And as far as that's concerned, I can dig out this way to the right here another four sections so I can get another two two uh two of these big pillars in and I can go another two sections this way before I run into my spider farm over there I believe yes we're gonna wind up with a pillar on each far side and we're going to wind up with five pillars total this one will be the middle pillar so I may wind up making an entrance somewhere right about here. Apart from that, I still think I can go pretty much as far that way as I like. Uh, I think I could probably go back that way too if I wanted to, but I kind of want this to be the back wall. And just to check in on our sugarcane farm real quick, you can see sugarcane is growing, the minecarts are running, and then this has been a long time, so this is hours and hours of growing. Filled up that row there just about, so eight and a half stacks there, just over nine stacks here. So this is working. It's not fast. It is really slow getting to that point. I've been doing a lot of work around here. 
That being said, we uh, just recently went end raiding. So that's where these came from. I don't think I mentioned that, but we went end raiding. I've got a bunch of stuff from it. Uh, so now I have shulker boxes. I've got my basics box, which is just stuff like wood, cobblestone, my scaffolding, shears, buckets, pretty much anything I might need. Then I've got my building box, and this is going to be coming in handy today. I've got everything I need for today's build, except for the brown wool. I'm waiting for brown wool. So here's my piddly little excuse for a sheep farm. I was going to try to do a mob cram farm and get some uh, mutton out of this as well, but it wasn't working as well as I had hoped it would. This just worked out easier. So I'm actually getting more wool from this than I was from the cram farm. In fact, I hadn't gotten any wool from the cram farm because I had only managed to breed up to like four, maybe five sheep. So I'm gonna just kind of camp this thing. Gonna breed them up as much as I can and hopefully we'll get the last little bit of brown wool we need to finish this stack and make one more stack and then I'll have everything I need for the pumpkin shop. The little punk escaped on me as I was leaving. Can't have that. Alright guys, and with that, we've got everything we need to start this build. Let's get over to spawn and get this thing going. So guys, before we continue on with what we were doing, I've got one other project going on right now. Now I haven't mentioned it as of yet, because it's kind of been a bit of a secret project. You can see, that's my nether portal. That is right next to my base. So. I was exploring around at one point, and I found just off in that direction, not all too far, is a village. And I've been needing villagers because I need mending books for my tools. Now there is someone on the server who's been trying to set up a bookstore, but hasn't quite got it running yet, and he's been taking a lot of time on it. So I've kind of run out of patience for this. And I've decided I'm going to go over to that village and I'm going to grab a couple villagers. Now the thing about it is it's not my village. It's already been raided and people have clearly been taking villagers from there. I think it might even be the guy who started the village farm at spawn. Or the bookstore at spawn, I mean. It's not all too far away and I could just make the run back and forth with a minecart. But I noticed, just next to the village is a river system that weaves through all these mountains around here and comes over to here. Now the problem with it is being that it's between mountains, a lot of the portions of the river have been cut off, and I've been needing to build quite a lot of the river myself, and I've been doing this while people aren't really on the server to try and keep it stealthy as much as possible. Now there is one person on right now, but he knows what I've been doing and he's on board with it. So him aside, no one else on the server knows what's going on. So I'm just gonna kind of take you over to the village real quick just to show you what I've gotten done. First of all, this river right here that I'm in that goes between these two uh, hills this wasn't here. This is all man-made. Now I'm sure it looks pretty man-made compared to the normal rivers, but I kind of don't think most people are going to notice that. Now this, this was real. But between here, again, I had to cut out and connect to more rivers. 
then right around here somewhere, just about up here, it connects again to another river right here. And then again, through here, it was completely cut off. Now this is probably the most obvious portion, being that these are such straight cuts. But I still think that's hidden away enough that no one's really going to notice it. Now I'm not done clearing it out yet. But I am very close. So going just up the river, not all that much farther, it ends off just around the corner here. I believe that's right. I believe right here, yes. So right here is where the river cuts out. Now the river, the biome, still runs through here. You can see where the grass is just a little bit greener than the savanna grass. And then you can see right here, a little patch of the river and then it continues on. Now from here, right over there, just over that hill that's not loaded in yet, that's where the village is. So we're that close to the village. I just need to finish cleaning up this one last spot, and then I'm gonna go in there and swipe a couple of those villagers away and bring them back to my base. Mission success. Alright guys, I'm here at spawn, finally going to get around to building this thing. So let's pick a spot around here. Yeah, I think right around here is going to be pretty good. I'll need to do minimal terraforming. I will have to tear out a lot of grass. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I might not even need to do any terraforming because I think I want to raise the building up off the ground a little bit to make it more visible from over there. And then I think after that we're going to build a path through here, going right over towards spawn, just to make things a little easier for people. I did talk to the server owner about this, and he's fine with me building a shop. I asked him about rules, and I guess there aren't any. So it's pretty much the Wild West out here. Alright, so I've got the foundation laid out now. It's only going to be an 8x8 eight eight area, so I do have a pretty good idea of what I'm doing. I built this once already in my testing world. Yeah, I think you're getting an idea where this is going already. Just gonna pop in some brown every now and again to... Hopefully it ends up looking like a pumpkin and not a basketball. Now I'm thinking that that's starting to get the right look to it. Just gotta pop out a couple of these brown wool to break it up a little bit and it'll look like a pumpkin. Alright, so I've got the outside pretty much finished now. And that pretty much came out exactly how I wanted it to. I've got some lighting in it set up so that it actually lights up when it's dark out. You see, I got jack-o'-lanterns here and here to light it up. Alright, it's just about at a time of day where you should be able to see this thing glowing pretty well. Oh, I'm really happy with that. I'm not happy with the stuff that just spawned on top of that, but I'm happy with that. I guess I can't use that bed right now. Let me see if there's a bed laying around somewhere else. Well, I just ran back to my base to sleep because I couldn't find a bed around there, and when I ran back, I found this in my base. So I figured I'd check it out with you guys and see what's in this. That's interesting. Some dried kelp slime balls and more dried kelp. And then we've got some notes. 
Oh, I guess I'm gonna have to read these. Puft ta ka. Ta puft ta. Puft ka ka. Repeat. What's that? A pack? A slimy, juicy kelpie pack? Yours to keep, strings untied, see. Kelp and slime open. Er, kelp and slime shop open, day and nightly, up the hill, just down the track. Enjoy your super dope sample pack. I gotta say, that's probably the single best thing I've gotten on any server in Minecraft. That's pretty great. I have a feeling I know who that's from, and I'll have to thank him later. So I just came out of the nether portal and realized that thing's like one of the first things you see. Alright, so I've started on the sign, and I figured I should get you guys in on this. So this is how wide it's going to be. I built this in creative once already. It is a very big sign. But you know what? No rules means I can make a really big sign if I want to. So that's the size we're going to be going with. This is probably going to take a while to build, and I might end up dying from fall damage. So I figure I should make the border of the sign first because that's going to be the easiest way to do this, I think. Well, I have quite clearly miscounted the amount of slabs I need for this because I'm already down to 10. Looks like I might need to run to the nether. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's... that's gonna be big. Well, let's be honest here. I don't think anyone's gonna be able to miss that. Considering this is what you see the second you walk out of the nether portal, Alright, and there's the display. These are the prices we're going to be charging, and I think this is pretty fair. One diamond for four stacks of pumpkins is pretty easy because pumpkins are pretty easy to farm, so I figure that's fine. One diamond for two stacks of jack-o'-lanterns or carved pumpkins, again pretty similar. I thought maybe I would split them up, but I decided in the end to keep them together. And uh, one diamond for half a stack of pumpkin pie. Again, pretty good. The most ingredients go into that and the most time. So I feel like that's pretty fair. So all I got left to do is fill these up and then put the uh, sign out front that it's open and hope that people buy. Well, here's the final display. I'm not exactly very heavily stocked up right now, but I've got what I can get in here right now, and this thing is looking pretty good inside. So that's the inside. The outside's looking pretty great. I added some pumpkin lights at the front. They are technically jack-o'-lanterns, but I have them facing in, so it just looks like lit up pumpkins. The sign turned out great, that turned out great. I'm gonna go grab my elytra and do a quick fly around. 
So let's just grab those things and show it off real quick. Man, it looks so good. All right, let's do this flyby. You can see the top really well. Oh, that sign came out great. Man, it just looks so good. I'm so happy with the way it came out. Alright. Well, anyways, that's gonna be it for today. I hope you guys enjoy the video. I'll see you guys later.